is Martina and this is the Flora Faunaful channel. Welcome! In some of my old videos I've talked about Bokashi composting and I just wanted to basically update that because I think it's a great way to compost in an urban homestead or in an urban setting or even if in the country. So sit back, relax, and learn about beautiful Bokashi. Bokashi composting is an anaerobic process that relies on inoculated bran to ferment kitchen waste, including meat and dairy, into a safe soil builder and a nutrient-rich tea for your plants. Um, despite its roots in traditional practices of Asia, here in the West, Bokashi is the kind of the new kid on the block of uh, uh, composting. Not too many people really know that much about Bokashi. And while there's a huge body of independent scientific work establishing the many virtues of both regular compost and vermicompost, nothing really exists yet for Bokashi, and I just don't get that. So, in Bokashi composting, kitchen scraps of all kinds, including meat and dairy products, are mixed with some of the inoculated bran, pressed into the Bokashi bucket, and covered with another handful of bran and tightly covered. When the bucket is full, it is sealed shut and set aside for about 10 to 12 days, or a couple of weeks. Every other day during that time, the tea needs to be drawn off. That's the only care that's required. So when the bucket is opened, the contents are basically pickled. They don't look quite fresh, but they are really still recognizable. At this stage, the contents of the bucket can be buried into a fallow spot in the garden. This brief overview of the process does little to explain about how it works. Um, so it may help to back this up um, with a couple of points. So what is Bokashi? The term bokashi supposedly means fermented organic matter in Japanese. Since I don't speak Japanese, I'm going to take that at face value. However, I can pretty much tell you that that is what it has become to mean in North America and Britain and continental Europe. The Bokashi host medium, also known as the Bokashi bran, can be almost any fine organic grain or um, grass-like substance, br bran, rice, used mushroom growth medium, dried leaves, but most of the time it's sawdust, <laughs> simple as. The sawdust is inoculated with beneficial microbes that flourish in an anaerobic, acidic environment, but smell less foul than those do in natural anaerobic conditions. If you ever have smelled horse feet, you'll know what the Bokashi brand smells like. The pre-compost does not smell like that. To prepare the inoculant, a brew that will attract appropriate bacterial strains is prepared and the host material is immersed in it and the microbes are allowed to ferment on it and uh, with the things around it. Molasses provides an energy source for the microbes which reproduce wildly for several days. Once the fermentation stage is over, the inoculated host can be dried, packaged, and stored for long periods of time. And this is what you can buy. So for the super nerdy, the bacteria belong primarily to three strains, yeasts or saccharomyces, bacteria that produce lactic acids, lactobacillus, and phototropic purple non-sulfur bacteria, rhodopseudomonas. Bacteria of the types found in commercial Bokash are all around us. Several online sites tell how to start and culture a batch of the inoculant from scratch, and that would eliminate uh, the need to buy commercial Bokashi brand. But personally, I don't think it's worth it, but that's just me. Um, i just rather buy it. So if you want to get started in Bokashi, I can tell you it is probably one of the least expensive composting systems around. A commercial Bokashi bucket consists of a five pound plastic bin with a tight fitting lid on top and a spigot near the bottom. This, the price may seem a bit steep at about 35 pounds, um, but that spigot might be the difference between a process that's really easy and one that's um, not so much fun, shall I say. The tea needs to be poured off regularly and lifting a five pound bucket full of soggy, gross looking kitchen waste is not fun. And um, trust me, I've tried it. Uh, <laughs> the only other equipment required really is the Bokashi brand. It often comes with your initial purchase of a Bokashi bucket, so you do pretty well. And again, you can get it off of eBay or Amazon. And Wiggly Wigglers, Wiggly Wigglers also sell Bokashi buckets and brand. 
and this is how I do it. I have a small plastic upcycled coffee jar sitting on the windowsill in my kitchen. Of course, there are much prettier things that can be used, but this does fine by me. Whenever I have kitchen waste, it goes in there with a sprinkle of Bokashi bran and I close the lid. When that is full, I just have to transfer that into the proper Bokashi bucket, and I do this about one every four days or so. Large bones will probably not disappear over the course of 10 days. The directions recommend cutting up some, uh, the smaller bones and even chopping other items into small pieces for maximum efficiency. I really can't help you with the meat bones thing because I'm a vegetarian, but it will just take a little bit longer if you don't cut them up. Um, that's basically how it always goes. Don't forget though, Bokashi is an anaerobic process. It needs to be kept fr as free from oxygen as possible. That's why you have to press the organic matter as much as you can to eliminate any of the air pockets. And when the proper Bokashi bin is full, um, I cover it tightly and set it aside somewhere outside, out of direct sunlight. It's just next to my compost bin in the shade. And um, it does just fine there. I've never had a problem with it. If you live in warmer climates, probably. Whenever I remember to, and it's honestly, it's not often enough that I remember, I draw off the liquid, which by the way, can be used as a fertilizer in a very diluted form, or full strength to control slime and drains, pipes and septic systems, just like the thermal composting tea. Drawing off the Bokashi tea regularly helps maintain the environment needed by the bacteria that break down the organic materials. That liquid needs to be used within a day or so. And after 10 to 14 days, the waste in the bin should be really pickled. It can then be planted into a patch of your garden or put into your proper compost bin. The last statement shouldn't be confused with the statement that the mixture is actually finished. I'd probably call it more of a pre-compost compost. The experts of Bokashi tell you the roots should not be touching the planted Bokashi pre-compost directly for a week or so after it comes out of the bin because it is pretty acidic um, and giving it a little bit of a calm down already time will help your pre-compost become more basic. I'm going to be honest, I usually just plant right on top of the boka planted Bokashi. However, what I do is I usually dig a hole, put, some so uh, put the Bokashi in, put some soil on top of that, stamp it down into the ground and add more soil, and then I put the intended plant on top of that and just plant it up normally. Never, nothing's ever happened, but who knows. Sometimes I put my pickled contents into my regular composting pile and using it as a compost accelerator. Burying it in the compost pile eliminates the worry of planting it too close to growing plants, and it speeds up my compost pile altogether. Instead of taking months to compost down, most of the Bokashi compost is done in a month. So, I hope this video was helpful and useful for you. If you liked it, please click the red thumbs up button. If you loved it, click the green thumbs up button to subscribe. Oh yeah, and there's a bell icon somewhere around here, down there, um, to be notified when there's a new video on my channel. So take care and enjoy your garden. Thank you.